You are a great looking church this morning, and I mean every morning. Um, you need to look at your neighbor and see, say, good morning. You look wonderful today. Let them know. Let them know. <laughs> oh, it is a very good morning to worship together which is what we're going to do. Come on back. Come on back. We're going to do that this morning. Friends, I hope you will take a look at your bulletin insert so you can see all the things we have going on here and in the community. Hopefully you'll have a chance this Tuesday to go celebrate CAPS. CAPS is a is a fantastic organization in town that we we work with quite often, and they're changing their name. They're keeping it as CAPS, but you can see in in our, in our bulletin that they're going to be Child, Adolescent, and Parent Support. That's their new name, and it's a, I think that's a great, great move for them. So go and se- help us celebrate them this, this Tuesday. I have a few announcements I want to share about what's happening here. One week from today is our Halloween Chili Supper. Anybody excited? Seriously? Oh, okay. Um, I'm really excited for food all the time. So, yeah, Peggy is excited. That's what I'm talking about. Come back a week from today. We will uh, celebrate Halloween and and togetherness and community and also our neighbors. We're inviting our neighbors to come. We'll eat supper together at 515 and then at 6 we'll have a trunk or treat. So hopefully as the clipboards are being passed around, hopefully you'll feel called to, to help us that evening so we can be wonderful hosts for our community. Two weeks from today is All Saints Sunday. That's a Sunday when we light candles, we name all of the saints who have gone before us in the last year. If there's someone in your heart that became a saint in the last year and you'd like us to say their name, they don't have to be a church member, or they didn't have to be a church attender, just anybody in your heart that became a saint, let the church office know this week or next and we'd love to add them to our list on the back of your booklet on the inside, I don't know, one of these many pages that you have in your hands, there's a list of the folks we have on our, on, on our hearts. We want to add anyone that's on your hearts as well. Like I already mentioned, clipboards, they're being passed around. I hope you'll sign up to serve on a Sunday morning. Sunday mornings take a lot of people. We need people to help park cars. We need people to greet. Uh, You saw those folks this morning. Please consider signing up for one of the coming Sundays. Are there any other announcements you'd like to share this morning? All right, well then let us, oh yeah, there is one, yes. Yes. Praise be to God. Yes, a new Ukraine family is in our midst. Diane and Bill went and picked them up in Chicago on Friday, on Thursday, and they have arrived in their new home, and, and we give thanks to God and to you for that great work. Thank you, thank you. Oh, you, they brought you a shirt from Ukraine and Bill. Oh, that's marvelous. That's marvelous. Thank you. Thank you very much. Well, let's prepare our hearts and our minds to worship our loving and our living God.
It's always such a joy to hear them. As they're coming back, please stand in mind, spirit, or body. And join me in the invocation done in unison. O oh, divine voice, you sing and the universe comes into being. You breathe and all things spring to life. You call and creation is sustained. You are born and you die among us. And the whole earth finds salvation. Amen. Please join me in the opening prayer. In the midst of darkness and chaos, in the empty and nothingness, in the meadow, God stood and in a world of rainstorms and wildlife, In a world filled with billions of people, God imagined you, God imagined you and God imagined me. We are created in the image of God. Let us worship with the same imagination as the creating one. Hallelujah. Amen. There we go. Thank you. Let there be light. Let there be sound. Thank you so much. This is a time in our worship service when we take a moment to consider the moments in our lives, moments in the past few weeks where we have considered or seen God in our midst. And so Kathy's going to come forward and share that with us. Good morning. I'm not a speaker of public, but here we go. Um, three weeks ago, I attended the National Disabled American Veterans Auxiliary Fall Conference in Erlinger, Kentucky, which is a suburb of Cincinnati. We had approximately 400 of our auxiliary members there. Um, two members stayed at a different hotel adjoining or close to our, con our conference hotel. Anyway, um, they were talking to a man and a woman that were at the hotel outside in front selling bracelets. And I happened to have one on. And they asked, you know, what's the money for? What are you doing? And they said, we're trying to earn money to move farther south in the United States. We live in northern Ohio, and our house burnt down, and we lost our service dog, so he was a veteran. And they got as far as Cincinnati, Erlinger area, and their car broke down. Well, 
being the members that we are, this came to us and we talked about it and they passed the hat. And my daughter stood up and said, I think we should invite them to our banquet this evening. So they came and attended our banquet, just pleased to be there and surprised that we donated $2,300 to them to help them with their expenses. So God was working at that time for all of us. Amen. Thank you, Kathy. You can speak in public anytime. Amen. Amen. Praise be to God who shows up every single day, every single moment, as long as we're looking and listening. Amen. It's a tough decision to decide whether to sit on this side or the other side. We're going to talk about a lady today named Fanny Crosby, and I found this picture of her. She lived a really, really long time ago, back in the 1800s. Here's her picture, Fanny Crosby. And I want to tell you about something that happened to her when she was a baby. She was about six weeks old. And she had an eye infection, and the person that was taking care of her thought he knew what to do, but he didn't. He gave her the wrong medicine, and she went blind. She couldn't see the whole rest of her life. Now, a lot of people, this would be, you know, it would be, well, it was terrible, but they would say, okay, I'm done. I'm not going to do anything. I'm going to just sit around because I can't see. That's not what Fanny Crosby did. She was never bitter. She never felt sorry for herself. When she was eight years old, she wrote a poem. Here's what it said. Oh, what a happy child I am. Although I cannot see, I am resolved that in this world, contented I will be. How many blessings I enjoy that other people don't. To weep and sigh because I'm blind? I cannot, and I won't. Fanny used the gifts that God gave her to write over 8,000 hymns and poems to praise and glorify God. Many famous musicians came to Fanny for help. They asked her to write the words to the music they had written. Once there was a very famous musician that came to her house on his way to the train station. He'd written a song and he needed some words. He was going to perform that same day. She only had 35 minutes to write this song. 35 minutes. That was the song, Safe in the Arms of Jesus. Some of us remember that song. Yeah. When people have amazing talents like this, they can do many things. Some people might brag about their talent and show it off. Others choose to use their gifts to glorify God. And that's what Miss Crosby did. Now, I told you she'd written 8,000 poems and songs. See these pink post-it notes that I have in my hymnal here? Look at all those. Each one of those is on a page that has a song where the words were written by Fanny Crosby. Now, we're going to do Name That Tune. <laughs> I've asked Kelly to play one of these songs from our hymnal, Words Were Written by Fanny Crosby, and we're going to see if we can identify it. Okay, Kelly, we're ready. can hear people humming along. Raise your hand if you know that song. 
Uh oh, you're trying to think of the words. Okay, who wants to be brave enough to tell us what they think this song is? <laughs> I can even hear people singing the words. Okay, what's the name of this song? I heard people saying, to God be the glory, and that's right. To God be the glory. That's one of the seven songs in our hymnal written by Fanny Crosby. Thank you, Kelly. Let's close with a prayer today. Dear Lord, the difficulties in our life seem small when compared to what others may be facing. Help us not to grumble and complain, but to praise and glorify you in every situation. Amen. Thanks for coming up today. It is amazing how many of you I could hear singing way up here. Wow. Today's gospel reading is from Luke 23, 26 to 43. As they led him away, they seized a man, Simon of Cyrene, who was coming from the country, and they laid the cross on him and made him carry it behind Jesus. A great number of people followed him, and among them were women who were beating their breasts and wailing for him. But Jesus turned to them and said, Daughters of Jerusalem, do not weep for me, but weep for yourselves and for their children. For the days are surely coming when they will all say, Blessed are the barren, and the wombs that never born, and the breasts that never nursed. Then they will begin to say to the mountains, Fall on us, and to the hills, cover us. For if they do this when the wood is green, what will happen when it is dry? Two others also, who were criminals, were led away to be put to death with him. When they came to the place called the Skull, they crucified Jesus, and there with the criminals, one on his right and one on his left. Then Jesus said, Father, forgive them, for they do not know what they are doing, and cast lots to divide his clothing. And the people stood by watching, but the leader scoffed at him, saying, He saved others, let them save himself because he is the Messiah of God, his chosen one. The soldiers also mocked him, coming up and offering sour wine and saying, If you are the king of the Jews, save yourself. There was also an inscription over him, This is the king of the Jews. One of the criminals who was hanged there kept deriding him and saying, Are you not the Messiah? Save yourself and us. But the other rebuked him, saying, do not fear God, since you are under the same sentence of condemnation. And we indeed have been condemned justly, for we are getting what we deserve for our deeds. But this man has done nothing. Then he said, Jesus, remember me when you come in your kingdom. He replied, truly I tell you, today you will be with me in paradise. Thus ends the reading.
Amen. Amen. I don't mean to pick on our worship leaders, because if I do that, then they, they don't come back. But George asked a really good question. I don't know that he really asked it, but he just, he kind of said, what in the what in the world are you going to do with this text? How does this have to do with the wisdom of trees? So I hope you are asking that question as well. With that in mind, let's go to God in prayer. God of joy, your blessings are countless, and your love is never-ending. As we spend time in reflection, please open our hearts to receive your spirit. Open our minds to hear again the blessings you offer, for you have done wonderful things on earth, and we offer you our thanks and our praise. Amen. Like you, every time that I sit in a chair, I expect that it will hold me up and keep me from falling on the ground. Every time I call my husband, I expect he's going to pick up the first time I call. Any other wives like that? Okay, I only saw one person. There we go. Thank you. Thank you. Each time I call my dad with a problem with my car, I expect that he will always have a solution. Amen? Thanks be to God for dads. In all reality, our lives, they are full of expectations. <clears throat> when we fall asleep at night, we expect to wake up each morning. We make plans, trusting that our eyes will open to see another day. When we need to clean our clothes, we expect that the washer and the dryer will work in our homes. We expect in this time of year that the farmers will bring in all the crops we need to feed our world for the following year. When Eric puts on his tennis shoes at home, our dog Dolly, she expects she's going to go for a W-A-L-K. We expect referees to make fair calls when they officiate football games. <laughs> wow, I didn't even have to ask the question. So it sounds like you did watch the Iowa Hawkeyes yesterday. I mean, if you just look at the defense, they didn't think it was a fair catch either. Okay. But of course, our expectations, they are not always met. A few weeks ago, while Eric and I were using several water sources in the house at once, the dishwasher, the washer, and maybe also the shower, Eric noticed the bathroom in the basement started to fill up with water. Why is that funny? No. <laughs> Sometimes we have expectations about how our house will function when we overuse our resources, but they don't always work the way we expect. Because we've had this problem occur once before, Eric knew what the problem was. We have tree roots from the large tree in our front yard growing into the sewer line. And about once a year, we have to get rid of the roots in the line if we want our toilets and our sinks to work. And guess what we do? We do want them to work. So apparently trees are not always our friends. And sometimes our expectations are not always met. The good news is that we believe in a God whose expectations are much greater than ours. We may expect certain things to happen and certain people to act a particular way, but our expectations are not often aligned with God's. And I think that's for a number of reasons, one of them being that God is always doing something new among us. Think about fall for a moment, autumn. I hold a lot of expectations about the fall season. After a long, warm summer, I expect fall is going to begin cooling us off. I expect bonfires and, and s'mores. I expect to start the day every day in fall wearing a sweater, and then I'll need a short sleeve t-shirt to cool me down in the warmer afternoons. I expect that during fall, my TV at home only knows how to play football games and nothing else for several months. And of course, I expect the leaves in fall to change a myriad of colors, showing me again the beauty of God's creation. 
What I don't expect in October or the fall is six inches of snow. But that's what fall brought us three years ago on October 19th. Did you see pictures of this this week on the news? This, of course, is from my front lawn, and you, you can tell that by the beautiful flag, right? Okay. <clears throat> Someone says, <laughs> for many people at this moment, the unexpected snow, it was a headache and a nuisance, you, you know, for people like Eric who have to shovel the snow, not for people like me who watch him shovel, but at our house, it was a marvelous day where we saw, if you'll go to the next picture, Cole, where we saw our dog, originally from Texas, jump about the snowy landscape as she slipped and slid on the deck and she chomped her way through the snow. That's just the beginning. There she is having the time of her life. We woke up that morning expecting a normal fall day, but not every day goes as we expect. And instead, in that moment, we found the beauty and the joy in the unexpected. Here's the thing about our expectations. God works beyond them. We expect God will play along with what we plan, what we anticipate, but we're constantly surprised because we worship a God who defies our expectations. You can think about this or see this throughout stories of Scripture. When Sarah and Abraham expect that they cannot bear a child in their old age, God says, guess what? And in their ninth decade, they welcome their son Isaac. When Moses expects that he is not good enough to lead the Israelites out of Pharaoh's oppression, God says, never mind what you expect. And with God's care, Moses becomes the most well-known prophet in both the Jewish and Christian faiths. When Naomi expects to travel back to Israel alone after her two sons and her husband have all died, God says, not so fast, and he sends Ruth to go with her. And now in today's gospel text, we encounter more expectations, and as a result, we, ex- we encounter more of God's defiance. No matter how many times Jesus warned his disciples, no one expects this violent ending, or what seems to be an ending. No one among Jesus' believers expected that he could claim to be the Messiah, to be God's anointed chosen one, and then to have his life end in this violent death. And to add even more to our surprise, the weapon that is used to help execute Jesus, that defies our expectations. For none of us see a tree and anticipate its use as a weapon. None of us expect a tree to become a tool for torture. Surely that's not how God intended a tree's use. We know from Genesis that from the very beginning, trees were meant. They were created to shade us and to provide us nourishment. And God created us, in turn, to care for those trees and the plants just as they care and provide for us. But instead, in today's gospel story, the text we often read on a somber day, on a somber night, on Good Friday. In today's text, we learn again how humans turned a symbol of life, the tree, into a symbol of death, the cross. We hear how Jesus must carry his own tree, his own tool of torture, that he must be nailed to it alongside two others who echo the words of the crowds, save us, save us. Of course, after Jesus dies a brutal death on a tree, on the cross, we now have new expectations. We expect this is it. This is the end. God is no longer God with us. The tree of life has become the tree of death, and that settles it. During Lent this past year, I discovered a beautiful story about trees, that trees that have expectations about their purpose and their callings in life. 
Sandy, our friend Sandy, read this story at our Lenten breakfast this past year. It was the first time I'd heard of it, and this week I was reminded of its narrative as it connects so beautifully to today's gospel story. This is the tale of three trees, and it starts out with three little trees who each tell us what they expect they will be, what they'll become when they grow up. The first one wants to one day hold treasure and become a treasure chest. That's what the tree wants to become. The second one wants to become a strong sailing ship to carry powerful kings and leaders across the seas. And the third one wants to never leave its post It wants to grow so tall that she'd reach up to heaven. Each one of these trees are a bit like us. They all have an expectation. They expect they'll be important and that their purposes will be fulfilled. And I want to read to you the last half of the book, what happens when the woodcutters come to visit each tree. The first tree rejoiced when the woodcutter brought him to a carpenter's shop. Not the busy, or be, but the busy carpenter was not thinking about treasure chests like the tree was. Instead, his work-worn hands fashioned the tree into a feed box for animals. The once beautiful tree was not covered with gold or filled with treasure. He was coated with sawdust and filled with hay for hungry farm animals. The second tree smiled when the woodcutter took him to a shipyard, but no mighty sailing ships were made that day. Instead, the once strong tree was hammered and sawed into a simple fishing boat. The boat was too small and too weak to sail an ocean or even a river, so he was taken to a little lake. Every day, he brought in loads of dead, smelly fish. The third tree was confused when the woodcutter cut her into strong beams and left her in a lumberyard. What happened? The once tall tree wondered. All I ever wanted to do was stay on the mountaintop and point to God. Many, many days and nights passed. The three trees nearly forgot their dreams, but one night... Golden starlight poured over the first tree as a young woman placed her newborn baby into the feed box. I wish I could make a cradle for him, her husband whispered. The mother squeezed his hand and smiled as the starlight shone on the smooth and sturdy wood. This manger is beautiful, she said. And suddenly the first tree knew he was holding the greatest treasure in the world. I'll show you this image if you can see it from where you're sitting. One evening, a tired traveler and his friends crowded into the old fishing boat. The traveler fell asleep as the second tree quietly sailed out into the lake. Soon, a thundering and thrashing storm arose. The little tree shuddered. He knew he did not have the strength to carry so many passengers safely through the wind and the rain. The tired man awakened. He stood up and stretched out his hand and said, Peace. The storm stopped as quickly as it had begun, and suddenly the second tree knew he was carrying the king of heaven and earth. And there's that image. One Friday morning, the third tree was startled when her beams were yanked from the forgotten wood pile. She flinched as she was carried through an angry, jeering crowd. She shuddered when soldiers nailed a man's hands to her. She felt ugly and harsh and cruel. But on Sunday morning, when the sun rose and the earth trembled with joy beneath her, the third tree knew that God's love had changed everything. It had made the first tree beautiful. It had made the second tree strong. And every time people thought of the third tree, they would think of God. And that was better than being the tallest tree in the world. Like these trees, we have expectations. 
When the Roman Empire makes the tree into a weapon, we expect the tree of life will now only be known as the tree of death. We expect that God cannot be God with us any longer, but God doesn't fit within our expectations. Unlike us, God can see all the possibilities. God makes all things possible with or without our expectations in mind. So when we think Good Friday is the end, God says, but what about Sunday morning? When we think the tree of the cross can now only be known as a symbol of torture, God says, what happens now on Easter morning when the tree becomes a symbol of resurrection and redemption? Humans are what turned God's creation of a tree into a weapon. That wasn't God's doing. But God was able to take what we tarnished and return it to a beautiful symbol once again, a symbol that points us toward new life, new forgiveness, and the paradise that Christ promises while he's nailed to the tree. Today, our gospel story might give the impression that the tree used to kill Christ is now only a tool for torture, but luckily we know that the story doesn't end where we ended it this morning. Like the three trees in the tale of three trees, and like us, our expectations may never become the exact reality we expect, but God's love, God's love changes everything. God's love cannot fit within that which we expect. God's love takes us above and beyond everything we can imagine, and now the tree of torture becomes the saving tree, and the best thing we can say to that is, thanks be to God. Amen.
This is the time in our service when we lift up the prayers of our community. Ava, would you like to help this morning? Come, I got it. I got it for you. Ava's going to come around if you'd like her to, there you go, thank you. If you'd like her to come to you for a prayer request, just raise your hand. You can see all the prayer requests, concerns, and joys that are listed in our bulletin insert. Of course, we continue to keep Israel and Palestine in our prayers. I've been praying this week as I've been reflecting about expectations, and I just ask that we pray that whatever we expect will happen with Israel and Palestine. I expect more genocide, more violence, but we ask that God shatter our expectations, that God would turn what we expect into peace and forgiveness, and we must continue to pray that, um, that it will only be God that can, that can help turn this around. Lois, did you have a prayer? Yes, um, for um, a retired pastor at Ebers named Gary, who was taken by, to the hospital by ambulance and has been hospitalized. Mm -hmm. They don't know what's wrong with him. For Gary. Thank you, Lois. I'm asking for prayers for my brother and his family as he lost his wife last night, Virginia. Aww. This has been a long trail after her kidney transplant nine years ago. Thank you. Thank you. Prayers for your brother as Virgin his wife, Virginia, passed. Thank you. Prayers for Delane and Kurt who are traveling right now, and I know that they're in Iceland. <laughs> Amazing. Thank you for Delane and Kurt and safe travels. We have a joy. Uh, we met um, an artisan named Leo Brown, and his picture is on the altar, and the tree is named uh, Tree of Life, mm -hmm. and he was a native of uh, Freeport, uh, Bahamas. Uh, we got to meet him. Um, also, um, the tree that's in front of Danny, mm -hmm. um, made out of uh, barbed wire, is from an artisan from Tama. Thank God for people that share their talents. Yes, thank you. Thank you for sharing them with us. Thank you. I'm asking for prayers for a surgeon and myself as they replace my knee tomorrow morning at this time. Prayers for you tomorrow and in the days to come, Kathy. Thank you. Let us not forget Ukraine. Mm, thank you. I was over in uh, Israel and Palestine on one occasion to understand the, the problems that were going on there at that time. And I spoke to a class of Palestinian children that were probably in about the sixth grade. And I said, I'm here to bring peace to your country, to your people. And those Palestinian children, they stood up and clapped their hands, and they were so happy to hear that. And today, we need to think about that seriously. Thank you for that. Thank you. As we think about all the war going on over in Israel and Ukraine and other places, this morning I had a joy as I was coming into town reflecting. I had a bald eagle flying over my car, and it was so wonderful to be thinking about the peace and the love that we think of when we see mm -hmm. a bald eagle. And to think of all the harvest that has been taken out of the fields and everyone that owes to have been gotten there through safety with it and to continue our thoughts with the Israeli people. Mm, thank you. 
What a marvelous reminder that joy still exists. Thank you, Karen. Well, let's lift up all of these prayers to God as we join one another in prayer. Heavenly Lord, we gather today to celebrate your forgiving and your reconciling love. In seasons of our lives, we sometimes feel lost or far away from you or each other. But every time we pray and every time we are with someone else, you tell us we have the ability to be welcomed home by your presence. So, Lord, may we remember how your love comforts us in every season, even the lonely ones. Help us remember how your love persists beyond our grudges, beyond the violence and the anger we're witnessing around the world. Your love persists and turns everything into forgiveness. And help us remember how your love calls us to go out and to bless others. Lord, we rejoice at the news of your forgiveness, which we are reminded of in your word today. And may you continue to comfort us in our weary and grief-filled moments. Remind us you can always exceed our expectations, and in the surprise is where we'll find you. With love, we pray this in the name of Christ, who taught us to pray, saying, Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Amen. Let's take a few moments now to offer our gifts back to God.
Almighty God, take not only these gifts that we've placed in front of you, but take our entire lives, take our mistakes and our regrets and our pain and turn them into joy and new talents so that it can all be brought about to bring more of your healing in this world. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. Just as the story doesn't end with the hymn, Were You There?, and it doesn't end with On Good Friday, uh, let's sing In the Garden to remind us where the story takes us next. Amen. If you were blessed today by the chimes, will you let them know? Let them know you're grateful. <laughs> thank you, thank you, thank you. That's our best prayer. Uh, I forgot to mention earlier that if you're interested in a mission trip, we are we have a small group interested in planning one for next summer. We're going to meet today instead of adult Sunday school. So join us all the way at the end of the hallway for that. Wherever you're going next, may you go with this blessing. May the love of God, the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the power of the Holy Spirit exceed your expectations today and every day. For God is doing something new within you, and so may our expectations not get in the way of God's blessings and grace. Amen. May you go in peace.